In this video, you're going to see a new topic on percent. We've already learned that percent means out of 100. And we've been able to find percents out of, um, out of a total of 100, or we've been able to take a fraction with a different denominator and transform it into a percent. Now we're going to look at something a little bit different, a percentage of a quantity, particularly percents of something that's not 100. Check it out to figure out how we do it. So in these problems, we're looking to find 5% of 300. 8% of 200, or 25% of 40, okay? Now this quantity can just be a number, or it can be a number that means a little bit more. In our previous method, we would use equivalent fractions. We would say, well, we know a percent always means out of 100, so we'll write 5% as 5 out of 100, or 5 hundredths, and we'll ask ourselves, what other fraction is that equal to? We'll add our other quantity and we'll be looking for how many out of 300 is the same as 5 out of 100. We would look for our common factors, so 100 times 3 gives us 300, so 5 times 3 gives us 15. That is a totally valid way to solve our first problem. But not every single number is going to be a perfect multiple of 100. So we also need to look at another way, using multiplication. As you can see on the bottom and in our thought bubble, 5% of 300 is the same as 5 hundredths, because we know percent means out of 100. That of translates to a multiplication sign, and then we have our 300. So I've written out our multiplication problem there, so you can remember how we multiply fractions, particularly multiplying a fraction by a whole number. So 5 hundredths times 300 is the same as 5 over 100 times 300 over 1. Remember, we can always write a whole number as that number over 1, that amount of wholes. So now we can simplify, noticing that 100 and 300 both have a common factor of 100. So we get 5 over 1 times 3 over 1, which also gives us 15. I want you to notice that 5% of 300 is 15, no matter which way you slice it. But we're learning this different method because not every number we're going to be calculating today is a perfect um, multiple of 100. So I want you to use the multiplication method to figure out what 8% of 200 is. Remember, you're going to set that up as 8 over 100 times 200 over 1. So find that answer. And I also want you to find problem C, 25% of 40 meters. That's 25 over 100 times 40 over 1. So those are the two problems you need to calculate. Pause the video now, give yourself a little minute, and you'll see the answers on the next slide. 5% of 300 is 15. 8% of 200 is 16, 25% of 40 is 10. I just want to give you a little bit tip of a tip here on number sense. Notice that when we're finding a percentage of a number that's greater than 100, our answer is going to be greater than our percent. 5 became 15 because when we made it out of 300, it got 3 times bigger. 8 became 16 because when we made it out of 200, it got twice as big. But when we did 25% of 40, because 40 is smaller than 100, our answer was smaller than the percent. Just a tip on number sense there. We already learned how to find the percentage when we were given the actual quantity. Now, we need to remember that one whole is 100%. So let's look back at this problem with sandwiches. Three-fourths of the sandwiches that Ms. Gomez made were tuna sandwiches. What percentage were tuna sandwiches? What percentage of the sandwiches were not tuna sandwiches? So we knew that three-fourths, okay, could be read as three out of four. When we multiply that by 100% by the whole, we get 75. Because we can do three times 100 and four times one. Of course, we cancel those things out, and we end up with three times 25 over one times one. That's our fraction multiplication. Remember, this is the same problem we've already solved with equivalent fractions, but now we're just looking at it again and remembering that we can also multiply to find the answer, okay? Once we know what percentage 
are tuna sandwiches, we just subtract to find the percentage that aren't tuna sandwiches. This part of the problem doesn't change at all. Now let's look at a new problem. There were 500 people at a carnival. 30% of them were children. How many children were at the carnival? So we've seen this problem reversed before, but we've never had a percent of a quantity. When we want to picture this idea, we know that the whole amount of people is 500, okay? And a portion of those, just 30% of them, were children. So we can set up a separate bar model where 500 is the whole number of people, but 100% is the whole. Now, you can see that three blocks out of 10 blocks were shaded. That's 30%. 30% is shaded. So we know 100% is the whole, and the whole is worth 500 people. We want to figure out what 1% is worth. If we take 500 and divide it by 100, we'll get the 1% value, 5. Now we want to figure out what 30% of that whole is. We take the 30% and multiply it by what we knew 1% was worth, 30 times 5, gives us 150. So 150 children were at the carnival. When we divided 500 into 10 equal groups, each equal group was worth 50, okay? 50, 100, 150. That's one way we could have figured it out. But this way of going down to the unit rate, always finding out what's in 1% is going to really help us. So in every 1% sliver, if you could imagine that bar model as split into 100 pieces, each piece would be worth five people. So that's how we were able to figure that out. We multiplied the number of pieces we had, those 30%, 30 pieces that we had, by five, which is how much was in each piece. In this problem, we know that the whole 100% is 500 people, okay? So this is just showing you the steps of multiplication we can do. Remember, 30% of 500, those are our words. We're going to translate that into math. Our 30% turns into a fraction, 30 out of 100. The word of, that term, turns into a multiplication, okay? Because we know that multiplication means equal groups. And then finally, we're able to simplify. You can see here that we've divided 500 and 100 by their common factor, 100, to get 1 and 5. And when we finish multiplying 30 times 5, we get 150. There were 150 children at the carnival. Remember that we've seen this of mean multiplication before when we were multiplying fractions or even when we were making equal groups of whole numbers. Let's try one more new problem. 120 students took a fitness test. 90% of them passed the test. How many students pass the test? Once again, we're given the amount that represents the whole quantity. We know the whole is 100%, and we know a percentage of a smaller group, but we're looking for the quantity that corresponds with that percentage. So let's look at our picture. The whole thing is 120 people, but 90% of that whole is a quantity that we don't know yet. So we're going to translate. 90% of 120, those words, into math terms. 90% is the same as 90 over 100, because we know percent means out of 100. Look at that thought bubble there if you were getting lost. Now, when we look at what to multiply it by, we're, we're changing the of to a multiplication sign, and then we just rewrite that term of 120. We write 120 in that blank. So we're doing 90 over 100 times 120. We can cross out and simplify our work. I'm going to show you how that looks right here. So here, um, we could simplify 120 and 100 to be 5 and 6 by dividing by 20. And that helps us find the number of students who actually passed the test. Okay, you could also simplify again once you have a 5 here. You can simplify from um, 18 and then 1 so that you don't have to do any division. But either way you slice it, as long as you do the multiplication properly, you should get that 108 students pass the test. 
That's all I'm going to include in this video. So please check out the next video to find the second part of percent of a quantity.